Hello everybody, welcome back to Expedition Homestead. My name is Ripley. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the channel today. If you enjoy content like today's video, make sure you subscribe, hit that thumbs up, and also click that notification bell so you will be notified every time we come out with some new content in our indoor gardens and outdoor gardens. I tell you what guys, we've got so much stuff going on. We've got jam-packed episodes coming out to you all very, very frequently. So in today's video, we're gonna be doing an update, a growth update on our jade plant that we had a major surgery on years ago. Just wanna show you all how it's doing now because a lot of you were interested in the actual hard pruning that we did on it. So I'm gonna show you how it's doing now, years later, like I said. And also going to be showing you all the aloe vera that we had almost completely die back We've nursed it back to life slowly over time, and now it's flourishing and thriving again. I'm hoping we get a couple more blooms out of it. In fact, you know, since we'll have this aloe for many, many years, hopefully we have it bloom several times. Um, it, it put off a beautiful, beautiful bloom a couple years ago. I have a video on the channel of that as well if you're interested. Uh, but yeah, let's get to it. These plants are a couple of my favorite plants. You know, my favorite... Indoor house plants has got to be ZZ plants, Sansevierias, aloe vera, jades, and then pothos as well. Those are just a few of the nice, well rounded plants that are very popular, and I also enjoy growing them. I will have to say, probably my favorite is the ZZ plant because they're extremely easy to grow. They're fairly fast growing if you have a plant that's uh, over three years old as well. You know, they say the first year they sleep, the second year they creep, and then the third year they leap. That was definitely true with our ZZ plant. So if you have a slow growing ZZ plant, don't worry, it might take a little bit of time, but that third year, fourth year, it's going to really explode in growth. All right, let's talk about these other plants here. The aloe vera, first off, I will show you guys a couple of quick clips over here. This is what the aloe vera looked like last year when we were nursing it back to life. It was in really rough shape. What happened was it got left outside in the rain for several days. We had many days of almost nonstop rain. And unfortunately, it was at my mother-in-law's house. We were at the, in the process of moving into our new home after we sold our condo. And she didn't realize that there was no drainage hole in that pot. This is an eco-friendly uh, recycled material pot that we used. And it's got a little plug that you can put in the bottom here. And uh, that plug was sealed. So this thing filled up with water for days and days. And I didn't think about it either. I actually didn't even know it was outside. And uh, what we were left with after we brought it to our home was was that again. So it was it was uh, a little bit devastating, but I figured you know we would do the best we could to nurse it back to life. So this is the aloe vera now. It is doing extremely well, almost as big as it was originally. So this aloe vera is probably about four and a half, five years five-year-old aloe vera right here. It is stunning right now. It grows under these grow lights very well. The grow light we have it under is the Vivo Sun 1000 watt LED grow light. I absolutely love it. It's one of the favorite, my favorite grow lights that I've gotten here in the garden because it's manufactured quite well compared to the other cheap lights. It is very affordable as well. Just hop over on Amazon. I don't have an affiliate link or anything like that. I'm not pushing the product, but I'm just telling you guys, I really like that one and it has an internal dimmer too. Uh, so very easy to dim it if you have some plants that are a little bit more sensitive and don't really need that thousand watts. Um, so this aloe vera is just looking beautiful. It's got some great colors to it. And in fact, it is starting to get a little bit of coloring on it as well. So with a nice healthy aloe vera, we don't want any pale colors and if it's in a condition that it really, really loves, it'll actually start to turn a little bit of a red hue. Now, just a little bit. Obviously, we're not looking for burnt tips or anything like that, but a little bit of a red hue starting about 50% from the leaf on towards the tip, 
is a healthy sign that your aloe vera is getting plenty of sunlight or in our case, artificial light emitting diodes. Now getting it back here is gonna be the trick. Should probably harvest some of those leaves pretty soon here. Maybe I'll do a video on stuff that you can do with aloe vera pulp, all that cool gel that's inside the leaves. If you've never cut open an aloe vera leaf before, Highly recommend it, satisfying, it's really cool, squishy, gooey, icky stuff that's inside of there, this clear, almost translucent gel. Pretty interesting if you've never done it, definitely uh, get an aloe vera and then cut open a leaf, really cool stuff. Plus there's so many uses for aloe vera as well. So yeah, uh, it's doing great, excellent. I'll tell you really quick before we move on to the next plant, what we did with it was essentially um, I avoided it at all costs. I didn't touch it. I didn't fertilize the soil. I didn't take it out of the pot to drain the water. I just took out that plug, let the water drain naturally, and then I kept it in as much sunlight as possible. Thankfully, it was during the summer months, so we got plenty of sunlight, and the weather conditions were very tolerable, too. It was about 75 degrees average daytime temperature at the time, so these conditions were going to be favorable for the plant to try and jump back. You know, that plant is trying to grow. So even though it would be almost dead, do not give up on your plants. But something that I do stress is if your plant is almost, it went through some sort of crazy catastrophic event, you know, not that it's just in uh, bad conditions to grow in the first place, but something definitely happened to your plant. One single event that is causing it some distress. You don't want to distress that plant any more than it already is. Instead, you just want to make sure that it's in the best growing environment as possible. Water it as a, exactly as you would normally, if not maybe a little bit less. Definitely make sure you're not over watering it, over caring for it, you're not turning up the soil. Um, just let that plant be for a little bit and hopefully you get a little bit of spark of life back inside of it. All right, the next plant we're gonna be taking a look at real quick is our jade. This one I can't pull out of its spot, but I'll give you a few close-up views and we'll just do a point and shoot video of it. This thing is also doing very well. We had a really, really, really heavy cutback on this. I mean, this pruning was out of this world. I knew it would come back, but I didn't know how fast and I didn't know how quickly it would continue to grow or if I would have any trouble with diseases. We absolutely did not have any trouble with diseases. It calloused off very well, even in the thick stems of the plants that we cut off, somewhere about an inch and a quarter in diameter. Um, it bounced back, great, excellent. No problems whatsoever. So if you have a jade like I did here, I'll just post a quick little clip of it right here. This is what it looked like before when we took the pruning. And a cutback like that, you know, it can be beneficial. If you have a plant that's tipping over and it's not, it doesn't have any strength in the branches, then you might just have to prune it because uh, whether it be, you know, not getting enough sun, so it's elongating a little bit and you're not building strength in the main stems, then you're gonna have your branches tipping over, possibly breaking off. So the, the point of this pruning was to create some more strength in the base, to keep it a little bit smaller, and to kind of form it the way that we wanted to. So let's take a look. So this is the jade right here. The colors look great. We've had no problems with diseases and we've gotten several inches of growth off of a lot of it. So you can see where we cut back there, 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 um, right here. So all this is new growth. Pretty much all of that is new growth up on the top that you see. We didn't leave a whole lot of it on there after the pruning. It has done excellent. I've just taken normal care with it. So I water it just about once every two weeks. It's been down here under the grow lights. Also has been grown um, in a south facing window for a little bit. Uh, it was just a period of a few months. And since we've moved it down here, it's doing great. It loves the LED grow lights. I don't have a problem really with any of my plants growing under grow lights. And 
in the basement too, it is a little bit colder. It usually is, uh, hovers around seven, or 68 degrees, uh, 70 degrees in the summer, maybe, but usually around 68 down here, and it is also dry. But even with that, the plants are doing great. And since these two videos that I made were very popular, I wanted to give you all an update on them. Now, before I leave, let's have a real quick moment. I do have failures in the indoor garden. Um, this, for instance, so a Chinese evergreen right here. I, oops. Yeah, I want to see if I can bring this back to life, but what happened was is I, I never potted it and I didn't pay attention to the soil so much because I just kind of had it tucked away in our bottom shelf over here and we've been super, super busy lately. So this dried up very, very fast being that it was in this pot with so many holes as soon as that soil starts to get some gaps in between the pot and then the root ball it's um it's gonna happen really really quick so a quick note if you bring home some plants that you love so much and you've got plans for them in your house definitely recommend potting them sooner than later so we can get that plant established in its new environment and possibly even soaking up some new nutrients and fertilizer if you're going to be doing that right away when you do repot it, I definitely recommend doing that. Uh, but don't keep it in the pot that you bought it in because it's going to dry out super fast. So there you go. That's my failure of the day. I want to thank you all so much for tuning in to today's video. Like I said earlier, subscribe, especially if you're still hanging around. It shows that you really appreciated this video and enjoyed this content. Thank you. Thank you so much. We need all the support we, we can get to eventually take this full time and really grow the homestead that we want to in our future for our friends and family and you all, the viewers, to enjoy. Thank you so much and we'll see you in the next episode.